I'm Dries, and uh, for the last six years, I've been an automation architect at Brix. Um, Brix is a Belgian-based managed services provider, and we help our customers manage their infrastructure in a fully automated way. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about the CMDB, or others, as we uh, also know, it's the Configuration Management Database. Uh, it's a concept that exists for around about 40 years, uh, but still struggles to earn its place within the IT landscape. In this talk, I want to show uh, how a modern vision on the CMDB might be what you need to get your automation journey to the next level. Um, even the name itself, it points to its importance in the way we manage our infrastructure today. Uh, by using automated ways like Puppet, for example, to manage the configuration of our platforms. Now, before we go on uh, and look at what this modern CMDB should look like or looks like, it might be interesting to take a step back in time and see what most of us think of when asked about a configuration management database. So let's take a look at what is a classic CMDB. Now, the CMDB was first introduced with the original ITIL standards. It was in about the 1980s, so four years ago. And there it was described as a database used to store information about hardware and software assets called configuration items or CIs for short. The CMDB acts as a data warehouse storing all information regarding relationships between those assets. Now it helps organizations to understand the critical assets and their relationship uh, with upstream or downstream assets thus giving insights into, for example, impact analysis. And it's a fundamental component of the ITIL framework, as you can see in the picture to the right. It's front and center and has links to all ITIL um, services. Um, and, and since ITIL framework is still at the heart of most organizations' IT procedures, um, that means something, right? Um, for most, like most of us, still act on incidents, problems, and changes on a daily basis. That's been like that for like 20, 30, or maybe 40 years. Now, the CMDB offers organizations uh, multiple views on the same data. So, first, there is the relational data, also often referred to as technical services. It shows the physical or programmatic relation between two assets. Um, for example, a server is connected to uh, a networking switch via an Ethernet cable, or an application server running a web app uh, has a data source pointing to a database. Then secondly, we also have the semantic view on the configuration items. These relationships are also often called the uh, business services. Uh, think of them like uh, when an end user has a problem, they don't call uh, your service desk to state that your mail server is down. No, they call you because they can't receive or send any email. So uh, a business service has a lot of moving parts, not all physically connected, uh, to make sure someone can send or receive an email. Uh, seen from a different perspective on that same data, uh, you can see your um, uh, configuration items or your business services also as the service catalog your department or your IT department um, offers to other departments within your organization. At a first glance, it seems like a simple task to centralize all configuration information into a single database. But in practice, we do encounter a lot of challenges when managing a CMDB. Um, while working with our customers, we were able to define three distinct categories of issues most organizations have to deal with. Uh, the first is relevance. Uh, making sure the data within the CMDB is correct and up to date is necessary. Think about it like in your daily work. How often do you hear phrases like, in theory, it should work like this, or when we designed this platform, it was supposed to work like, and so on and so forth. Uh, when I hear sentences like that, I always think of one of my managers I had when working for a government agency. When we came to him and we had an issue when we started our sentences with like, in theory, it should like, he always stopped us immediately and said, I don't care how it should be. I care about how it is and why it's not behaving like it should. Uh, 
Uh, that kind of information requires an as-built CMDB, not an as-designed CMDB. Uh, and that's why most companies uh, have processes built around this premise in order to maintain the integrity of the data. Uh, they take a look at some... Uh, so what I want to say is like, you can clearly see this uh, in the some of the bureaucratic change management processes that go around in all types and sizes of organizations. Uh, all there just so the CMDB would contain the as is situation. It is very much a limiting factor to deal with these long change processes on your automation journey. Uh, sure, we can deploy a server in 10 minutes, uh, but that's only if you count the days it takes to go through a change advisory board, get approvals from everybody, and all the manual steps that still need to be taken before we can kick off that nifty script that takes us like 10 minutes to spin up a new instance. Next is maintenance. Um, companies face constant change. Uh, data about CIs and their relationships are also constantly changing. And not only do these things change more often, but those changes are also coming in a faster succession. Uh, change cycles are always going faster than before. And in most cases, the time needed to make the necessary adjustments to the CMDB are not planned or expected. It's like with documentation. Nobody likes to plan for documentation. Same thing, nobody likes to plan to make changes to the CMDB. So the changes simply don't get uh, reflected in the CMDB. And as we discovered, organizations often find this one of the most greatest, uh, most greatest challenges uh, just to keep this CMDB data up to date. Last but not least, uh, we also come to the point of usability. Uh, most CMDBs are just that, as in the name applies, they're just databases. No traits, features, or benefits of more complex applications. They lack tools to view data via complex visualizations or tools for advanced discovery. Um, this means that most companies need to invest in an extra application layer that adds such constructs to their CMDBs. And this adds a layer of complexity and cost that most companies do not plan for or expect. However, implementing these kind of features that ensure the database is up to date or allow it to interact with systems to run commands, apply updates or deploy new applications extends the functionality and usefulness of the CMDB. This brings us seamlessly to the modern CMDB. How do we tackle the previous challenges and make that CMDB work for us? How do we make the CMDB the heart of your automation and your platform? A little context on how the IT landscape has changed over the years since we first started using the CMDB might help us understand even better where we are going. Modern cloud native infrastructure is much more volatile than the classic on-premise infrastructure. In a cloud-native environment, there is no time to add or change things manually. All changes are made programmatically via configuration files or configuration management tools like Puppet. The number of assets we are managing is growing exponentially. In the 1980s, we were still working with physical hardware, where you had one machine that did one thing. Later, we moved to virtual machines, and all of a sudden, one machine did like seven things. And, and so now you had eight assets to manage and the hardware you had before and seven VMs, so that's eight. And now we even go further and start using microservices and containers. And now suddenly we are supposed to manage thousands of assets, assets every day. Uh, and most of those assets are, are ever changing. In the meantime, driven by um, the DevOps movement, we are shifting responsibilities to the left. Development teams should not be dependent on a manual change process that keeps hands on a CMDB before being able to deploy a new application. As we do more deployments than ever, um, a high-speed change management becomes a necessity. All of this leads to a few solutions uh, that might change these hurdles into opportunities. You can leverage the power of the CMDB to gain speed, keep oversight, and to support your growth. 
um, one of the first things to do is to only store CIs you are going to manage. In a microservices platform, for example, you are not going to store every individual container. It was already part of the original uh, ITIL versions, by the way, uh, to only store CIs you actually want to maintain. Um, for example, in that sense, you don't manage every individual container, you, you manage the pod those containers run in. Um, but somehow, over the course of the 40 years we, are be we have been using uh, ITIL and CMDB, we simply have forgotten this part. Um, it was, I, I always remember one of the, the things we learned when we started with ITIL like 20, 30 years ago. How deep do you want to manage it? If you don't care to maintain a hard drive, if it is a disposable thing within a physical machine, you don't add that hard drive to the CMDB. You manage the server the hard drive is in, but not the hardware, not the hard disk specifically, only the server. And it's the same, that's the same thing. The, the, the principle still exists, and, and as, as assets grow, as things be, are being added, as speed grows, we really need to think of what do we really want to manage? What is it that we really need to know to get the job done? Second, link your CNDB with automation. Make sure your CNDB is accessible, both for reading and writing via an API, for example. That way it can act as an inventory for your automation tools. Uh, imagine that you can start your provisioning workflows right from within your CMDB, or that your Hira data is not in YAML files, but right there documented within the CMDB and ready to be used by tools like Puppet. Vice versa. Nobody likes to spend hours of time copying changes uh, from your automation code in the CM, just in the CMDB, just so the correct disk size is there after a puppet run. Feed information back into the CMDB on a regular basis. Create, for example, an automated process that gathers all relevant data and make sure that it gets pushed back to the CMDB, keeping it up to date for you. Now, as a Belgian, I was looking for a good excuse to include some beer here in my presentation. So, and we have called, we have something here called the Perfect Draft, which is a self-service beer tap for your home. And this is a great way to introduce the self-service concept for the CMDB as well. It's a new look on change management. Um, a lot of changes we do are controlled. Uh, they are done often, tested up front and pretty small. The hefty change management processes that we have in place now are probably not needed for those things. Um, if we have the necessary automation and the necessary automated testing and, and things in front, we do not need someone to manually push an OK button. And if we can make sure that our self-service workflows gather the right information for us, we don't even care how often we run them and that an automatic approval can be given. And if something does go wrong, there is always audit trailing, which we can use to see what went wrong and how it went wrong. And since our changes we do often and in small batches, it's also easy to turn them back. Finally, uh, there's security. Things don't get any safer when running your platform. Cyber attacks happen more often than we would like. Security is key, and that's why we evolved from DevOps to DevSecOps, making sure that security is there, security by design. We've at Bricks, we often work with security partners on getting our customers a secure platform. Uh, lately, uh, we are integrating things like uh, user management in the CMDB as well. Uh, we use tools like HashiCorp Vault or CyberArk in conjunction with the CMDB. This gives us and the customers a view on what accounts and technical accounts are going around in the organization, who has access to these types of accounts, but also a unified impact analysis. When an account is compromised and it is linked to other CIs, then we can make a fairly good assumption on what machines 
uh, are being impacted and how big of a threat the breach is on our platform. For some customers, the CMDB is the place to be when you want to create an Azure AD group, for example. All automation starts there. Now, from a pure, pure technical point of view, Puppet has some out-of-the-box solutions as well. Um, the integration with ServiceNow, for example, is something we have implemented uh, in a few, on a few occasions. Uh, it allows for a two-way use of the CMDB. It feeds Puppet and gets its information back from Puppet. ServiceNow has built in a, a great built-in self-service capability. And in conjunction with tools like CD4PE and uh, continuous delivery for Puppet Enterprise, we have set up some great change workflows fully managed from within ServiceNow with all approvals there, automated if needed, manual if really necessary. Now, I know there are some other uh, talks on ServiceNow which go much more into detail. Uh, they're all happening here at Puppetize Digital. So if you want to know more, go and check them out uh, because they're really, really interesting and it's always great to see those things uh, in practice. As a conclusion to this talk, um, I want to add this, like the CMDB was and is and remains the center of your ITSM organization. That should not change, let that be clear. Um, the faster things move in your business, the more critical the CMDB gets. It's just that we need to rethink the way we are using and treating the CMDB today. It can really enable you and your organization to grow faster uh, with less friction as well. Making sure your CMDB is ready for that future or make sure that your CMDB is ready for that future and use it as a starting point for your automation journey. It is still an underrated and often perceived difficult administrative chore, uh, the CMDB uh, in the IT organization. But in the core, it can be a powerful enabler of great things. It is just a matter of giving it a, the place it deserves and opening it up to other workflows via automation. With that, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation. Uh, if you want to hear more or want to chat, uh, stop by our digital booth or find me on the Puppet community Slack under the handle you see here on the screen. Uh, I was Dries Dans, uh, Automation Architect at Bricks. And with that, I would like to thank you all for your attention.